Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Compassionate, the Merciful, peace be upon you. Peace and the blessings of Allah be upon you. Our forum today is uh, highly important because it talks about the, the security in the Gulf and the security of the Gulf is tied to the security of the world. The countries in here, they have an active role in providing the world of the energy they, it needs. The session today is rich with its files and papers, uh, opinions and everything, and the, and, uh, and the facts and outcomes it has. This session is very important because it talks about developmental challenges in the area. Through this, we talk about two important uh, topics, the, uh, the food and water security and the uh, region, and then energy shift and what it means to the Gulf countries. First, let me welcome our, Gulf, uh, our, here, our guest, the first, let us uh, welcome here, Mr. Al Murar, Chairman of the Department of Energy, uh, His, Highness, His Excellency Awed Al Murar, and then we have Professor Walid Khalid Al Zuhairi, Professor of Water Resources Management, Arabian Gulf Uni University Kingdom of Bahrain, and to discuss the topic of food and water security in the Gulf. Please take the floor. Peace be upon you. To beginning, I would like to thank the, the Emirates Center for allowing me to participate in this important uh, session. And I would like to also to commend the Center for integrating the uh, topics like uh, water security, food security, which are the uh, non-conventional topics. I also would like to see that the uh, health security, environment security, topics like this to be integrated into the discussions. These would help us to overcome some of the questions. Uh, the topic to cover here is uh, diversified, uh, when you talk about food and water in the Gulf countries, Arab Gulf countries. Here, when we, uh, and the uh, the Gulf uh, University, we give this course over 48 hours over a whole semester. And now I am asked to summarize it in uh, 15 minutes. I will uh, touch on major topics here. Uh, I was lucky that his, Her Excellency, uh, Minister of State, Maryam Al-Mahiri, uh, she handled, she touched on and dealt with some of the topics in the Gulf area. So now I will talk about the regional topics rather than... Uh, now, as an academian here, uh, I, need, I should start with a definition of the, uh, uh, what we meant by food security. Then we move to, to discuss some topics facing the, uh, here, the, the Gulf countries as a system. As for the water security, there is no clear, agreed upon definition of, uh, of water security. Countries have different definitions. Uh, and also it is different. It differs from scale to scale. From when we talk about uh, a, sta a city, a country, or the world. Now there is an escalation on this problem, and we know there is a, a change, a climate change, and some countries also will have some problems. Uh, countries will have some confrontations and conflicts like Egypt and Syria. So now we see that uh, these problems, these issues came to the forefront when country where we have conflicts. These uh, issues, range between protecting the historical rights, water rights uh, for some countries and for them uh, this is security. So when you talk to people in Egypt, they talk about their historic rights 
uh, and nothing else. And after September 11, the secur uh, water security meant in the safeguarding of water. Now here we talk about uh, having potable water available to the community during war. Some other countries look at the water security as uh, an important uh, element when uh, for the production. So when we talk, uh, in Syria, uh, water security is important for food production. Uh, there are a number of frameworks that uh, are used here when we talk about water security. Uh, since 19, 2013, uh, there is an attack on this one and a lot of uh, literature about uh, water security. In summary, if we took all these uh, definitions and some of them, we, say, we could say that uh, water security handles four ish points. One, having water in the required quantity in the good quality uh, and at a price that, is, that can be reached at. Then the second point, how to deal with emergencies and crises that could lead to the disruption of this of the flow of water. And then we talk, the third one is about the environment, the ecosystem, and then the, the fourth number is the management of water. These four elements exist in any of the definitions of this one. There were uh, attempts to measure the, uh, the water security and establishing indexes, indices. So uh, we tried to establish the points of weakness and points of strength. And the last, uh, the latest uh, example we reached, we got it from, and, and this one was also adopted by the whole world. And there are five dimensions for the water security. One, getting water and sewage. And I don't think here we have a problem in the Gulf countries. And then well, economic water security and waste here. And that's another one. And here, and then we talk about externalities and pollution. And this happens, uh, and then we talk uh, the water environmental securities, and we talk about water. Then we talk about sewage here, and, and then we talk about desalination as well. That goes to the sea, and this affects the marine life there. And the last one, is how to have a flexible system that could handle uh, uh, crises and emergencies. These are measured, they can be measured at that, as you see here. And we identify areas of strength and areas of weaknesses, and then we work on the various areas of weaknesses and we strengthen that. In general, uh, water security is being looked at from two different sides. Here, unfortunately, here in the Gulf, we look at, at it from one side, which is a crisis. Now, we might have some, some discussions, and we have here from the Emirates. Uh, they handle it in a different way. It is not, and here they look, don't look at it providing uh, security and protection to installations but it, they move to sustainability and having it for a long time. And I think protection and sustainability are important. Working on the crisis and for getting uh, the, the, the usage will not be helpful. So we need to look at the two sides. If we look at the major issues here and major challenges facing us here, I think we have a number of them, and we don't have enough time to touch on all of them. I'll try my best to handle them quickly, but I'll focus about uh, events and crises. 
I think most of uh, um, the, the audience here would like to know what would happen and if installation facilities stop to work. Now, the problem, one of the biggest problems is that uh, the use of water here, the drainage of, the wa of what we have here, yeah. And if we don't, if we are not aware of how to use water, then in uh, emergency in air emergency situation, well, it will cost us a lot. Second point, we will we depend a lot on uh, facility uh, desalination desalination wall uh, installations, and we have ninety percent of the capacity is in this uh, in this area. We still import this technology. And I think we need to localize this technology and use it and install it and, and have it as an added value to our economy. The third one, which is uh, about, yes, reuse of the poten potential of the generated wastewater. And now this, the, the water, uh, water usage is an in increase because of the increase of population. And uh, but we are, uh, we are not using it efficiently, I think. And for me, as a person who works in this area, I think this is a way, uh, lost opportunity. I think uh, having 40, we, we use 40% of produce of water here. When we talk about water security, uh, what comes to, our, to the government uh, 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 official here is what to do in case of emergency. And this is the first perspective. In any country, uh, in, in most of the countries, the situation is how to, how to secure the provision of water and not water security, uh, and not to talk about our security. So this is the major issue here that the, uh, that is being considered by the government official because this is a life or death issue. The methodology to face such a situation is a well followed, is well known one. It's not a new, uh, not a new a rocket science or a new uh, technology. We know all about it, we know the risks, we evaluate the risks. We uh, devise plans to face this risk. Let us take the potable water, the water we get at home. In the Gulf countries, all of them depend, most all of them depend on desalination water. This water along the, the, uh, the Gulf coast uh, is located in enclosed areas and has been touched by uh, previous uh, speakers. We have about 20% of oil goes uh, through uh, this, uh, this Gulf area. And it goes uh, through the Hormuz Strait, about, about 40,000 tankers move through the, tank, uh, the, the Gulf. 40% of them is commercial. All the, what happens to these installation, uh, installation, desalination installations, what happens to them can be from different sources. It can be accidental or deliberate. The map here, here we see the, the flow of the traffic in the Gulf area in 2016. Uh, that also covers the movement of tankers. If we look at the risks facing the Arab countries or the facilities, desalination facilities, we can enumerate them as one contamination it can be nuclear contamination and that from Iran that could take to you know, go get to the Gulf, it will go across the coast or from Emirates to Bahrain to Kuwait. And now we have all our installation facilities along that one. 
and we can talk about oil spills as well, and that's uh, red retard. It can be natural causes. It can be storms. It can be a compact, uh, a war, and then the, the, the these facilities could get uh, hit. Another one is hacking. Then we're talking about asymmetrical. And that can, they can attack, they can attack the core system and, and then paralyze it. And they can use the technology here. To, uh, we have some experiments here, some examples in Bahrain. Uh, we are very simple. They didn't look on. I, I really feel it's, I'm sorry because the speaker uh, code switches from Arabic into English and I find it difficult to translate. Now, we don't evaluate crisis here, but if, but in case if we have a very system, a good system to deal with this crisis, then that will be good. Then if we take Abu Dhabi example and water storage and Liwa, yeah, aquifer storage and recovery using surplus desalinated water, uh, now, a lot of, uh, of countries, they think, they consider a strategic uh, storage of water. Now, I, I have one minute. I, can, I don't think that's enough to talk about food security, if you'll give me. So if you allow me, I will, I will just jump to the conclusion. Uh, and... Uh, uh, What I think water security, we should look at it from different perspectives. The first one is to deal with the crises, and the second one is to manage water resources efficiently and uh, stop the wastage. Uh, 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 and they ask for food. I'm not going to talk about the, uh, the outcomes here because I didn't talk about it. Now we need to talk about the understanding of, of government officials here because they have uh, different because they have different uh, dimension. There are different dimensions they can consider. It's not only a crisis. We are talking about uh, water sustainability here. We in the area we need an index of research here in the area. Uh, I hope this is uh, a good start. Thank you very much. Shukran للأستاذ الدكتور. Thank you very much to Mr. Wali for his research speech. Well, he spoke about the region water and food security. In this context, we want to shed light on the UAE experience in food security. Now we will move to the second speaker, talking about the energy transition. Implications for Gulf uh, States. His Excellency Engineer Awaid Al Murar, Chairman of the Department of Energy in Abu Dhabi. First, good afternoon. I would like to thank the ECSSR for this important topic for the whole region. Within this topic, the transition, energy transition for GCC countries. There will be three simple ideas. First, we will talk about the international energy and we will talk about the geopolitics economy and then we will talk about chances and strategic choices. Definitely the energy is focusing on the international sustainability and minimizing the CO2 emissions and the relation between the international policy in energy that's related to the energy transition. As considered the first one, 
and it happened in the recent years in different stages it started from basing on charcoal and that started and after that oil and gas then that transportation based on and even iron and cement then we moved to the nuclear energy and it was limited because of Chernobyl accident and now we are moving to the renewable energy why? because of the depleting of the fossil fuel and we want now to focus on sustainability the numbers in this context according to our research from MS Diplomacy Center about the transition in energy the moving factors in the coming years will include economical development social development technological development and according to the different policy and also the international energy organization said there will be more demand on energy by one person every year till 2040 and that because of the increase in population which will reach to 9 billion in 2040 on the regional level the countries in Asia like India they will have quarter of demand and so the international organization China will be the biggest consumer of energy and the biggest importer of oil so 49% of the of demand in energy will fo be focused on renewable energy using gas will increase to be the second instead of charcoal and the second source and that will be evident in the different indicators on the screen also the international organization think there will be decrease on demand on oil because now there will be more use of electric vehicles it will be in the coming decades because there is more now focus on the land cargo also they expect that electricity 40% will focus on energy and we will see more demand on technology that is focused in storing energy and also capture carbon capturing also the agency expect to be 3 million electric vehicles by 2040 also the agency there is expect that OPEC chair will decrease by 47% regarding the impact of energy transition on oil because of the environmental issues and the awareness of climate change that has moved the mechanism in consuming energy so the energy sources now is different and diversified we start to focus on solar energy hydro, hydro, uh, hydraulic energy The impact of this energy transition for GCC countries the base now is increased and that will shape the future for oil and gas even though it's a quick change now but we have seen clean energy in Europe and now it's slower in the different world between a country to another 
regarding the geopolitical dimensions from the 70s of the previous century OPEC countries dominated oil and gas and they focus on petrochemicals refineries and with the decrease of demand of OPEC now they move to Asia, Asian countries and we start to hear about different type of oil and fuel within short time America within change from that to be the biggest uh, 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 importer now they turn to be the biggest exporter of oil and that decreased the prices in the international shares and that decreases the import for USA from oil and gas in GCC countries from another aspect the renewable energy sources is available and it can be produced in any part of the world in different levels regarding the political and security dimension we have seen different elements like in Obama era there, is, there was a, a release of the nuclear penalties on Iran and the decrease of production in Arab world because of the internal conflicts and the sanctions on Russia that also minimized competitiveness in the markets and the attack on Iraq facilities recently increased the concerns about oil supply chain and that increased the prices which is considered the highest since the 80s and this accident raised a very important point regarding the international capacity of using this oil all the reports now indicate for the coming decade that the, inc the production of the oil will increase and beat and then it will decrease so it will be back to the GCC countries in addition to that we can also look at the oil production because it will not waste the, the uh, reservoir of the GCC country what is the role of gas in this period the international energy they will say they are, there, is, there will be more increase and more demand on gas China will have 30% of the demand and after that the Middle East there is an expected increase of demand in the Middle East and that because there is more demand for electricity and now gas is used instead of oil to produce electricity because it's considered a bridge in order to move from a low emission CO2 and also to produce more gas and export more through the, co the, the carbon capturing technology there is now more oil gas field in, uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia and also in uh, Abu Dhabi in Jabal Ali and the country now is, is trying to double its production which is considered a positive indicator in the international energy stage if we look to the chances and the strategic choices for the GCC countries even the demand is decreasing for the GCC country now we start to focus on the energy transition and we start to look on the environmental dimension so all the GCC countries they have signed 
on Paris Climate Change Agreement. And they put also different measurements in this regard. Also, GCC countries, they are benefited from low-cost energy and producing energy from the renewable sources. Solar energy is the highest in the world. So we have the financial capabilities to invest. And also, we have the empty lands to build solar energy facilities. It can be quick, direct which is considered a good environment for solar energy. Also, we focused or built the GCC electricity connection in, this, in these countries to ensure the flexibility and to have more economical returns. The nuclear now, the nuclear uh, plants, power plants in Baraka, and this is similar in Saudi Arabia that help in the energy transition and save the environment, especially in cutting the CO2 emission. And here we need to have a guaranteed sources of oil and gas, which make the GCC more competitive in this regard. And that will have more Job vacancies. So we are looking to more more than one hundred thousand job vacancies in this sector, and the transition to clean energy and focusing on on gas instead of oil, that will have more returns for the GCC countries. So, the GCC countries they have the power to keep the stability in the market. Regarding the strategic choices, within the energy transition globally, oil demand is more ambiguous. And so GCC countries, they need to have a different strategic approach. In addition to that, the quick response to energy transition not only renewing their energy, but also increasing more gas and also to have a strategy in dealing with the competitiveness and also exploring more gas fields. The returns from the investments is very low in comparison to oil and that will have impact on, on supporting the oil field. So investing in oil and gas and also the renewable energy at the same time is the best solution currently. Within more demands on energy, investing in, in renewable energy and also gas, that will be the best choice in order to meet the high demands especially in the international markets and that also for example like Emirates and Kuwait all experts agree and also reports diversifying the economy and the income is the best strategy to face any challenge in this in, in the field of energy and it's not, it's not happening in energy only, but also it should include tourism and the knowledge-based economy, innovation, health, and other sectors. Energy transition is ambiguous. And so our strategy needs to be flexible, adaptive to all the scenarios. We can't say we have 100% transition to clean energy, but we need to continue in both. The best choice, increasing the capacity of the use of energy. And here we need to have conservation, raising the awareness, especially for water security, as my colleague Walid said, or even food security. Again, Emirates Diplomacy Academy there is now 
Excuse me, there's one minute only left for you. Okay. This report say that transition internationally will have impact on the diplomatical aspect and on the position of the countries. So the GCC countries, they need to focus more on the field of sustainability and expansion of network. Our dear guests, the energy transition has different impact politically, environmentally, and economically on our, era, on our area. And for that, we need to work together and also to have different choices and solutions. Especially in energy, we are facing the same challenges. And that is the way to find better solutions in order to supply more energy to flourish our nations and to work together to shape the security of our GCC. Thank you very much for your attention. Thakran, uh, Excellency Engineer Al Marar, mm, uh, through his talk, we learned about the regional and international challenge challenges when we talked about energy shifts. Now we open the floor for your contributions, questions, comments, discussions. I start with, uh, with our brother Walid. We, 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 we just really, we got afraid of when you talked about the about water and we become thirsty. I think you gave us uh, an idea of the risks we face here. And I don't know about whether you had something in the materials you didn't talk, use here. Now we talk about the technology and now they are talking about desalination uh, the, the, using the, the, the sea water and use the desalinated water here uh, to irrigate the areas in the desert so it becomes green. Now, if we talk about uh, human beings as us, our, our usage is limited. I think you use this you know, because you wanted us to get interested in your talk. As for oil, your excellency, now here, you know, we have some people, crazy people in the media who talk about strange things, really. One, 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 one of those crazy people who are enemy to us, who's, who says that we cannot liberate Palestine until the oil is done with in the, in the Gulf area. This, they build a connection between Palestine, liberation Palestine and oil. How? I, I would like you to make a comment on this, please. Thanks uh, about the question. Uh, we, I didn't have the time to cover all the issues, but there are serious attempts in the Gulf Co Cooperation Council countries here to uh, listen the uh, dangers of drinking water. The issue, the case is larger than providing the water provision. And we are talking about a strategic issue here, which is desalination of water. If you have 90% of the water you have comes from desalination. And when you talk about 50% of energy of the world located in this area, and uh, you, everybody depends on these uh, uh, installations, then you shouldn't be an important importer. You should be an exporter. If we talk about uh, we talk about the cost, the efficiency of these facilities, now we should join our efforts and set a target to and put a date to have like a, a, a year by which we will get to uh, achieve our goal. And I think uh, we have a friend who's working on this. And the second point is about 
scientific research, technical research. I think here we have like islands in the, in the Gulf. People work on different issues. We move to teaching, uh, education here. Education is not considering this uh, desalination as a major issue. And in, in our universities, we don't have a major to, to that concentrates on desalination. When we talk about also vocational training uh, or institutions, we don't have it. If we talk about security and stability, that's one side. Now, if we talk about dealing with water efficiently, I don't think we are using it efficiently. We have the highest rate, the highest level of usage in the world. Now we are using three times of, of the normal or the world level, which is 250. Now we are using triple of this. I don't say that we should stop using it. We are talking about waste here, and that's very important. I don't, I'm not talking about recycling the water. Uh, when we talk about infrastructure and oil, and, and uh, that gave us, gave the residents and the expats here that we have wealth of, of it. While the reality is that you spend a lot of money, uh, that's uh, in terms of energy and with the emissions from it and the efforts, and that contradicts with the Paris Agreement. And then we have water uh, that goes back to the, to the sea, and that comes from the desalination, and people don't consider this. I think we, with desalination, will uh, be friends for a long time. So this, we should uh, localize it, and it should be part of the industry in the Gulf. Thank you, Dr. Walid. The second uh, part of the question here is to His Excellency, Engineer Walid. Energy is the mo what mo moves the whole world. We cannot do without it, uh, whether we are talking about food security or water security. The energy in life is a main element for a number of things. The Gulf countries, are blessed uh, by Allah, have this oil easy to, to get, and it will last till the last drop in the world, and this will be in the Gulf area. And this is from Allah, the leadership, uh, the leaderships and the, the in the region gave directed to develop the use of this. We started from nothing and now we have become uh, members of developing countries and we're competing with them. And now when we directed this wealth into development within either whether internally or externally we benefited from it. The question is how to use it and maintain it for a long time and benefit from the returns of this in other economies. Well, here, what we recommend that we should go for diversification of sources of income. And, so, and we need to use the income from oil in different economies, different areas. As for the second, part, I would say, let history answer. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now we take one question. Now there. Yeah. Uh, uh, engineer uh, uh, Vidat from Jordan. Uh, really, uh, the um, uh, food security, water security, has become the most dangerous topic in the Arab world, and we, it has a first priority to handle and discuss here. Because when we talk about the coming world war, it will be a war on water. 
And what uh, Dr. Walid has mentioned is very important, is very serious and very important, and we should discuss it at the uh, security, water security at the Arab level. When we talk about desalination, where you have water, where you can have water, is different from areas where you don't have water. So we shouldn't be uh, producers and exporters to the same country. We noticed that at the world Arab level, that in Sudan, uh, Egypt is pressurized by Ethiopia. In Iraq, they have pressure from Turkey on water. So the, 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 the coming war it will be on water, and this is not something extra. I here I commend the, the center for this uh, for for this symposium. I I would say that we need to have a special a special one a special symposium to discuss the issue at the world level. I agree with you 100 percent. But I wanted to note draw attention that most of the frameworks that in which we uh, measure the security water security. Uh, uh, that most of it doesn't uh, don't actually apply to our situation here, because some of the situations here we have uh, it's unique. They are unique. We don't have here problems like floods, like other countries. Here we, as researchers, we are trying to have our own ind index. And when we, like when we talk about geopolitics and uh, and the relation with Iran and the or the, what happens from Iran here, and the sabotaging activities of, by Iran. At the end here of this session, I would like to thank here uh, uh, His Excellency, uh, Engineer al Marar, Awaid al Marar from Abu Dhabi, and on my left, uh, Dr. Al, Dr. Uh, Dr. Walid uh, al Zawbari from Bahrain. The second session will start uh, shortly and will be chaired by uh, Mr. Sultan Ashir Rafi. And now uh, we thank everybody who participated in the second session. And now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm uh, Dr. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Fahad Ashlemi. Tomorrow and the day after is the Independence Day for Al Kuwait. So I would like to thank everybody who participated in the liberation of our country. Thank you very much for all the countries who participated in the liberation in Egypt, Syria, United States, United Kingdom. A second point, I would like to thank the UAE as we are here. May Allah rest his soul, bless him peace, Sheikh Zayed. And I would like also to thank all the martyrs who died in in Kuwait, the leadership, the nation, they all opened their hearts before their homes. I would like to thank the UAE in the past, in the present, and in the future. So I would like to present this blog to you. And now we start our third panel session under the topic of regional stability and defense development. The panel chair is Sultan Ashrafi, acting director of media department. In name of Allah, our dear guests and attendees, peace be upon you. We would like to welcome you again in this symposium for Gulf security and confronting the challenges. I would like to welcome my uh, speakers under the topic of regional stability and defense diplomacy. We will start from Kuwait, from Al Kuwait, Dr. Fahad Al Shlaimi, political and strategic analyst and researcher 
state of Kuwait, who will speak about the prospects for resolving the Qatar crisis. He will speak about the historical dimension and the role of the involved countries directly and indirectly. So you are welcome, Dr. Fahad. And from uh, Saudi Arabia, Dr. Khaled Batarfi, professor at Al Faisal University, who will speak to us about the role of international alliances in the region, USA, Russia, and China, and the historical stages for the GCC countries in the previous century before and after the independence of its country. You are welcome, Dr. Khaled. Who will start with Dr. Ashlemi first? You have 15 minutes. You are welcome. Floor is yours. In the name of Allah, the compassionate principle, they have been given a difficult uh, topic, but I'll try to be realistic and talking, talk about the prospects of a solution of the crisis, the Qatari crisis. Uh, we're talking about the crisis between Qatar and the Gulf countries. Uh, it's continuing. We will talk about uh, background, historic background. We'll touch on it very quickly. We will uh, use a uh, historic analysis and then we will talk about the future. And then I'll use the SWOT analysis, and uh, we're talking about uh, opportunities, yeah, weaknesses, and this. And this has been used. Uh, this SWOT analysis is used, as you know, in business, and uh, we'll try to use it uh, to analyze the the situation here in the Gulf and the crisis between Qatar and the Emirates, and we are treated as a company with a capital, so uh, that's why I'm using the SWOT analysis. When we talk about the crisis, the Qatar crisis, we have a number of countries involved, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain, uh, uh, Qatar is a direct uh, partner. Uh, there are indirect uh, par uh, parties here, uh, talking about Iran and Turkey. Uh, uh, we have neutral uh, countries here, or partners, parties like uh, Kuwait and Oman. We have international parties like USA and Russia. Now, when the crisis started, Qatar moved quickly on different fronts, and that was shameful, and they talked, they said, they said that we were boycotted during Ramadan, and we sieged, we sieged us during Ramadan, and this is, well, I will handle this at all levels, uh, political to co economic and social. This uh, move was shameful, it, uh, it didn't rely on any facts. Political, before the uh, Qatari, the, uh, Kiwa the Kuwaiti, attempt to make a solution, to have a solution here. And the, the, the Qataris they tried to use the time and to have time on its side. And they used the time, they used the attempt to enlighten the, the, uh, the impacts of the boycott. The, now, now we got to know that there was a strategic uh, alliance or agreement with Turkey and no one knew about it. That was an old history. And at the diplomatic front, they used their diplomatic diplomacy to, to justify their uh, moves. The foreign ministry there, the Qatari foreign ministry, put a lot of pressure on American because the, the, the Gulf countries uh, have alliance with America and they have alliance with the, also with them with the neutral countries. All these, um, all depended on the on Kuwait. And then we, we talk about the Qatari teams and whether in the foreign ministry or embassies, they, they had it, uh, they put the image that there was, they, 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 they were, there was pressure on Qatar and a small country and they were bullying a small country and if we move to Turkey, uh, the, to Iran, they use the, the, uh, the relationship with Iran, they use the ports, and they use the, 
uh, the water, international water territories and, uh, and they use the waterways, the Iranian ports, everything. And if we talk about the legal front, we, go, we, we are surprised to know that there are academians or lawyers, Qatari lawyers, who uh, filed uh, suit cases against, against us. Uh, they, they manipulated Article 33, and I think all the, the, they failed in all the, uh, their uh, legal attempts. They, in the media, they instead, they used the word seed instead of boycott. Uh, we used the word isolation, and and now talking about, and, and now this is when we talk about coronavirus, and I think uh, it, is, it is similar. When we talk about the media, uh, they used all social media and they moved along that one. Uh, if we talk about the international level, they moved, they used the press uh, agencies, reporters, they gave them stories, their story of the event that uh, Qatar is a small country, we were fasting, it was Ramadan time, and the uh, Gulf country, the, uh, the other countries separated us. As regional, on the regional front, they moved to North Africa. They moved to North Africa and moved there internally. The, then Qatar, they, they, they actually they, they use the people there, I mean they use the media there to uh, rally the people around them and then move to another issue which is the Khashoggi case in Kuwait, they talked about it, they uh, Yes, we know it's an event. Uh, someone got killed there, but uh, the Qataris took it to all France, the uh, human rights agencies. Then, then we, we talk, mention they also use their media to portray themselves as a small country being bullied by other countries. All this, we didn't, they didn't talk, uh, or the media there in Qatar, they didn't talk anything about their interference in the uh, Egyptian affairs during the Arab Spring. Now we don't see them uh, in, in Libya. Also, their strategy focused on the uh, Arab media, and especially in North Africa. If you notice, you would see that most of their broadcasters, most of their reporters uh, direct their discourse to the people there. They talk to the people in, the, in North Africa. And we don't have uh, reporters from the Gulf, people from the Gulf media on, on their teams there. That's because they want the Egyptian audience because they want the you know, the audience in North Africa. They don't want the, the uh, audience in the Gulf. And then they, they used their fabrication of events there and, and magnification of events there, blowing up things there. And they use the social media for this purpose. They use the international press like uh, newspapers in America. Uh, they used alliance uh, with some newspapers in, uh, like in, in, in the world. Some of them are well known. Even when we talk about some uh, human rights agencies, they use them in their case. Uh, during this case and uh, this crisis, uh, during we had the, the, the Turks interfering, they come and they had a presence in the GGC area. Now we have a foreign country with a presence in the region. There is no threat, no such a threat on on them. They they said there are the, the, are the other countries were intending to invade us, but that was not true. And now also we have Iran uh, through the agreements 
with the Iranians to utilize and use the uh, gas fields. Uh, this is a very dangerous a threat to the uh, Gulf security. Uh, also, we have the Arab, bro uh, the Muslim brothers, especially, and their position, and that's the Reform Party in Yemen. They were uh, a clandestine uh, party, and but then after the after the events, because of the Qatari support, they now they they got uh, in the media and. We know, as part of the event, uh, of the outcomes, we know the some of the some recordings of Gaddafi, some kind of recordings of uh, of terrorists even, uh, events, and they, these are facts. These recordings and the, the planning to kill, to murder, or assassinate the late king, Saudi king. Now we see. Uh, position here, a position of power in this area here, in this crisis. Uh, in the past, it was uh, during, uh, during Sheikh Tamim. It's different from time when Muhammad was in charge. Now, people question, ask who is in charge of the situation and who has the say in Qatar. Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamad, he got to power after he hijacked it from his father. He thinks he has, he thinks he has a personal uh, enmity with some members in the Gulf area. He has, a, in 1991, he had a very bad position when he asked, he, t he asked to solve the problem with Fashti Dibble. He had a wish for power, so we have disparity in, posi in political positions. They attack Israel, and, they, and then at the same time, they have relations with Israel. They accuse people of They have double standards in, in their dealings with Israel. Uh, now we go back to who, who rules Qatar. Who has the decision? Every, every day we have someone in, someone in the media, a different one in the media. We have uh, Sheikh Jassim, Hamad bin Jassim. And, uh, now I'll talk about the position of Qatar. I'll talk about the, there is strong of, uh, factors of strength and factors of points. They have wealth and they don't, there is no mechanism for, uh, for solution of the situation here. In the past, it was friendly, uh, on a friendly basis. The political situation, econo uh, the economic situation here, and now we're talking about some countries like Egypt and Syria and Iraq. These countries, they had, uh, the, the position was very weak when it, it came to the Arab decision, Arab position, because because of the Muslim brothers who got hold of the leadership in Egypt. Now we have 57 countries in the Islamic organization and some of the members of other alliances, other organizations. They have all these and these are strengths. Now working with the, also the, the government, the Qatari government worked with the other governments and they coordinated with Iran with Turkey, and they coordinated with Europe and uh, other, and United States, they coordinated with Israel as well. And, and now, yesterday, only yesterday, we had reports about the Mossad chief uh, visiting uh, Doha. They have intensive media coverage in the North, in North Africa. They coordinate coordination with uh, international uh, non-governmental country uh, organizations. Now there is a drainage of their um, of finance of of wealth, and now also another the position of the countries of the blockade here. There is a position also. 
when we talk about their allies, uh, Turkey and Iran, they, have, they live in a very worse, in a very weak economic situation and internal uh, conflicts. And now, also, we talk about the, the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhoods and the, the demise of it. Now, the, 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 the political maneuvering space is being limited. And now, and there, the division within the family itself, and Qatar also, the retreat and the freedoms, personal freedoms in Qatar and personal and opportunity available. Now, if we talk about the availability, the opportunity, now we need, we need to have successes with Turkey, with Iran and the, Democra uh, and the Democratic Party in USA and Europe. And then they should have some weakness in the blockade here or in the, and the change in the general attitude on the Gulf. Now, the, the strength, the strength, if we talk about the end of the, uh, of the war in Yemen and the weakness of Iranian uh, w uh, position and also the weakness in, in Turkey. These are weaknesses facing Qatar. In summary, from 20 to 21, we expect to, that the, the uh, blockade will continue the uh, war wars will continue. Europe will benefit from the situation here because they don't want to solve the problem. They are benefiting from both parties. Jazar, uh, Qatar will try to par to personal to work on on the issue to make it individualized choices to stop the uh, media war. Think of a solution, recommendations. We continue as we are, put more pressure on Qatar, uh, and then file suitcases against them. And then we talk about the Muslim Brotherhoods, criminalize them at the world level. And thank you very much. Shukran. Shukran. Shalimi. Thank you very much for Dr. Fahim Shalimi, who spoke about prospect for resolving the Qatar crisis. Now I will speak with Dr. Khaled Batarfi, 15 minutes, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Good afternoon, everybody. I will speak today regarding the role of international alliances in the region, like USA, Russia, and China. But before that, before you understand the current situation, you need to go back to the history. Because if you don't learn from history, you will repeat the same mistakes. So the first stage before the independence, the first stage before the independence uh, from, United, uh, from United Kingdom, We here talk about the GCC countries, Iraq, Iran, and as you can see in this map, the United Kingdom also ruled Al Hijaz after defeating Uthmani Caliphate and also Al Ashraf Kingdom in Palestine, Syria, and Jordan. The second stage after the oil. This is King uh, Abdul Aziz when he was visiting Aramco. <clears throat> Here we have British companies in Iraq, Iran, and Bahrain at the start of the century. And the biggest discovery was in the eastern of Saudi Arabia on, America, on the hand of American companies. After British companies said they can't go into financial adventures after the request from Saudi Arabia. And here, United States started to build here its interest in the GCC country. The clearest geopolitics is the meeting between USA, the 
Mr. Franklin Roosevelt and the, the King Saudi Arabia and Quinsky in 1945, capping a new era of partnership for more than eight decades. At the end of British mandate in Palestine and announcing Israel, Israel and uh, even the uh, status in 1952 and also Muhammad Musaddaq in 1953 and the independence of Sudan in 1956 and Abdul Karim Qasim in Iraq in 1958 and in the south of, of Yemen so here most of the British era finished and now America starts to roll all this area. The French power also got weakened after the independence of Lebanon and Syria. The third stage after independence, the independence of the countries in the GCC and the start of the era of oil and gas with partnership with the international com uh, companies and countries especially in the security of the formula so in the cold war the gcc country uh, stand with the uh, uh, western and focused more on the on the western especially uh, united kingdom and united states in building education and uh, uh, development and in this stage there, there was building military bases and they have the facility and the, uh, the military uh, existence in the GCC the fourth stage after socialism that started in the late 80s and the start of 90s diplomatic relations with China in trade and after that in more cooperation in, in construction investments and even military Soviet unions also worked hard at the uh, uh, last years where they focused in 1991 and the finishing of the Cold War officially in the second millennium there was more development with Saudi Arabia and UAE and there was more cooperation in oil, gas and sustainable energy, trade, investments and security. The most famous investments was in refining space and even sustainable energy. When we talk about the partnership with the GCC countries, the first one was with the United States. This picture we can see between King Abdul Aziz and, Ms. and, King and the President Roosevelt on uh, the back of Quincy. At that time, the agreement that happened with the GCC countries is about security in return of oil at the beginning or in the middle of the previous century. And here the United States military protected the GCC country from Soviet Union after the invasion of Afghanistan. And also after the partnership with Abdul Nasser and Al-Assad. This relationship, there was different threats, the, all the bias from USA to Israel and the invasion to Iraq and the most positive and negative is the uh, uh, petrol cut after 1973 and supporting the uh, uh, Soviet power in the uh, 70s and the 11th of September, where some uh, or number of uh, uh, of uh, GCC countries members involved in this, in order to harm the relation between uh, Saudi Arabia and the United States, so supporting George W. Bush for his 
Kaios and Mr. Obama also supported the uh, Arabic Spring and supporting also Turkey uh, and Brotherhood and give it them to Iran being open and signing Iran for the Iranian nuclear agreement and living with the American occupation in Iraq. Within all of these, and with the different challenges, the partnership with the United States continued and developed in the era of President Trump, and correcting the path. Today, this alliance, especially in the field of security, has a great challenge and putting everybody in the first row to face the Iranian threats to the energy in the Arabian Gulf and the Red Sea and to prevent Iran from creating a chaos like my colleagues say today. Russia, sorry, here we talk about Russia. The different partnership and uh, between uh, Russia started in Iraq after after the militia turnover and it developed with Iraq and uh, 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 Al Baath Party benefiting from the Arab Arabic uh, uh, angry anger for the American support for Israel especially also the ones who are working there also that increased in developing the relation between Russia and Israel and minimize it with the Palestinians after Russia getting busy with the, with the destroying of the United with the Soviet Union all these new factors in the era that uh, explain why Putin and uh, 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 filled the gap after the withdrawal of Obama and being present in the military existence on the Mediterranean and working with Syria that created also an openness with the GCC countries like uh, Saudi Arabia uh, and uh, Emirates regarding energy and uh, peaceful nuclear and the cooperation with OPEC to control the uh, uh, the market and there is also more Russian companies in the field of petrol and even energy especially they participate in a, in a high level in, for the exhibitions in Saudi Arabia and uh, United Arab Emirates and that indicate the, the change and I, I don't think it will be a strange when we hear an invitation for Mr. Putin to attend a conference here. China. China started late, but after the visit for Mr. Nixon to Pekin in 1972 and starting a, a, a diplomatic relations, that opened more space for the countries. King Bandar bin Sultan visited China and he got an agreement to get ballistic missiles especially in the Irani Iraqi wars and that started the political cooperation and the investments and to have more Chinese companies in construction in the last two decades we here see China as a, a, a international power we hear about the Silk Road and the international cooperation in science space and the military participation in protecting the uh, straits in the uh, 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 Gulf area. Adopting also a Chinese language in the governmental schools and universities that also indicate the importance of development in the relationship and how the GCC countries, they see the importance of China on the international stage.
and then the TCC countries. In the last three decades, they have th uh, new policy to be open, to be open to all the international countries in order to achieve its economical developmental interests. Even though the partnership with the West still continue, especially with the United States and United Kingdom, France, United European uh, uh, Council, because of the deep roots, but still it's open for all the international trade, especially the industrial countries who are capable to meet our demands, especially security rights, like China, Japan, uh, India, Russia, Brazil, and all the G20 countries with the partnership with United States, Russia, and China. But as I said, the state has balanced now. Talk about the interests and the solid situations, especially if you in security. We have different uh, negative experience, especially in, in George Bush era after 11 September about the chaos and Barack Obama after the Arab Spring and the nuclear file with Iran that pushed the country in order to diversify the interest with other country and to focus more on its capability and developing more partnership on the Islamic Arabic level to focus the different elements regionally and internationally. Some of these aliens, military ones, with to fight uh, uh, terrorism, and that includes uh, some countries like uh, Pakistan and Turkey, and some of the strongest ones like Saudi Arabia and Egypt and UAE. Other development, in other development like uh, starting the medical industries which is considered important in this regard, like uh, South Korea, Brazil, and South Africa. So the future of relationship with GCC is open, diversified, and balanced. And for all who would like to participate in this critical moment, as Dr. Abdullah Khalq is describing, is very ambitious for the coming years, so they need to be abide with the system and regulations. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Khaled, for this paper that handles the alliances, the foreign alliances in the area, Russia, uh, China here. And it mapped the areas of influences in the now we start our discussion for 15 minutes. Uh, please, if you have a question or if you have an inter comment, please have a, a very short question so we can have, we can accommodate more participants. Peace be upon you. Thank you to the doctors for our, their discussion here, and Dr. Ahbari here, Mr. Ahbari, and Dr. Fahid as well. You, you said, you questioned whom, or you raised the question who governs Qatar. If the academians and politicians uh, have, uh, are puzzled with this question, I think uh, we can get, especially when Qatar just took their own way away from the Qatar from their uh, its sisters, and now we are talking about the fourth gen war, uh, fourth generation war, which is uh, destabilization of uh, other governments and the media war. Now the question is the media in the Gulf, especially in the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, meets the challenges posed by the media and from Qatar. The second point, you said that 
the media, their media focuses on North Africa like and Egypt. Where are we from this? What's our position on this? Dr. Fahad. Thank you for the question. The uh, media, the Gulf media, to be honest, is tied to the government media. It is a respectable media. And now here we have accountability. If everybody is accountable, the reporter, the uh, photographer, everybody is accountable. They cannot, and even uh, during uh, the, the media, the interviews, we are not allowed to just to discuss other and keep on going. After 1995, the media, after 1995, aimed at destroying the countries surrounding Israel. If you think, if you look at this, this lie, the ge geographical lie of the Spring Arab, the Arab Spring. It is not uh, an Arab Spring. Look at Egypt. In one year, uh, Egypt deteriorated. Though they, they have the, the trends in Egypt, the social situation, but let us look also at Syria. Syria is one of the, uh, the, the countries facing Israel, the front countries. This media, addresses the passion. Now we also, we were affected by it and we started criticizing our governors and our governments. We were puzzled. Then we discovered that it was a trap and that the freedom, the media, the freedom they talked about, it was a trap only. Now, their target is North Africa. And we know it is because here we are in the Gulf, we know their media. Well, there's a discrepancy between in their position with Israel. One day they just attack Israel, and on the following day the uh, Mossad officer is in Israel, in Doha. One day you're talking about uh, the Palestinian child, and then the following day you have an Israeli lecturer. Uh, you're talking about uh, about scandals. They paid fifteen million dollars to the uh, authorities in, in Gaza not to launch uh, to launch any missiles against Israel. Now, if we talk the uh, deal of the century, they were partners to it. They are a, away from, from MENA, North Africa and the Middle East. They focus on the people there. These, the people in, in these countries, they have their culture, they have, and they are, they are passionate. They believe in what uh, they say in these channels. Because so they align. So also the script, the way they write their script suits the ear of the people in North Africa. We, they don't have any national. You don't see one with a headdress working in these uh, in these ones. We have only one in the. An Arabic channel, Akimati one. They they don't want you. They don't address you because you know them. They want the North African people because they don't know them. Any other questions? Doctor Fahad, good afternoon. Uh, the fact is that is the my, my my talk here is from heart to heart i don't have any sources we will we, we we like you and that's why we are harsh on you 
the second question you said was in your talk, one of the reasons for the deterioration of the crisis is the division within the country, the Gulf countries. I want you to talk about this topic, our beloved Kuwait, where, where it is. Kuwait is a new thing. Please talk about it. We follow. We talk about the ideologists and the thinkers in Kuwait. They are divided there. We have a pride in them. And now we leave it to you. Dr. Khaled, my brother. You covered uh, a very, uh, the history in our, a good way. But the question is, and then what? Victor, why Kuwait? Why did Kuwait took the neutral position? There are things I don't talk about. These are very political. Uh, I heard it, so I cannot uh, talk about it in the public here. I tell you why, because the geographical position, they are located within big countries. So they have only the mediation as their, out, uh, as their uh, the option. And they, the Houthis with the uh, legitimate country had their talks in Kuwait. So their geographical location forced the, forced the government, the, the triangle, the Kuwaiti triangle to talk within the negotiations. The transparency of the Prince of Kuwait, His Highness, he is 50, has been 50 years as the foreign affairs, Minister of Foreign Affairs. So he believes in negotiations and dialogue. Kuwait got into the mediation so to cool the situation, because if you cool it down, you can handle it, you can address it. But there were stubbornness uh, from the people who caused the crisis. And regretfully, if we look at China and America, they had an economic uh, problem, but when they were affected negatively, they got to a compromise. No, in our case, no, it is a stubborn, tribal, personal. No, never, there is no, we don't consider the interest of our people. We don't consider the money of the people, the wealth of the people. We use it for political just stubbornness because of a personality that suffers from two things. Panoroya, the duff. And, and, and the, the personality, the, the, the wishful thinking of power, the and, and that, that's the leader, the, the leader personality. When we talk about strategic intelligence, when we talk about the, the personality of the leader, we have 30 points, a checklist of 30 boxes. If we apply this, we will find that one of the extremist personalities is that, that started in 1995, because those people who have no good for the people, have no good for others. The second side now, okay, I'll try. And what's, what's after that? Uh, now that I started with my saying that if we don't learn from, the his from history, we'll repeat our mistakes. Our companion, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, there are lots of lessons, but we, but fewer, uh, we, we learn very little from them. We have wise people here, and uh, generation after generation, we learn from these people and apply, apply these things. That's why we succeeded, we succeeded in some areas where others didn't, Be, like in education, because of wisdom, despite the challenges and expansionist wish trends. And then the question, What's after?
now we don't deal with others. We shouldn't deal with others as individuals. We should deal with others as a group. As, and that was the idea behind the Cooperation Council. We deal with the world with our conditions. So there are no lasting enmity and there's no, um, also as well with the friendship. There is no lasting friendship. We are talking about interests. The Gulf Council here deals with Europe based on interest. <coughs> so if we talk about security or military as well. لا نضع بيضنا في سلة. We don't, we don't put all our eggs in one basket. الشرقي أو المعسكر الغربي الآن ما. So now we have different aliens. We we can move freely. We can build bridges with everybody and to compete. Let them to compete to win the interests. And we started to hear about different things now. Have you thought to speak that? Um, Saudi Arabia now is signing contract to build weapons, Russian weapons in Saudi Arabia or maneuvers with China. So new things now is happening and this is a new trend for the wise people in the GCC countries. And I hope that this will continue in the future. Thank you, Dr. Khan. Uh, um, that's enough for today for, for now and we move to the final statement and that with the recommendations and that with Dr. Leila Plushi. Thanks to everybody participated who participated in this uh, session and now we to go to the final communique, final statement and you will have a copy of it on your seats and after that we will have time for discussions. Participate, participants in this, in the seminar organized by the Emirates uh, Center on the 24th of, 20, uh, of February 2022, the symposium on challenges, security challenges here under the, uh, under the Partnership of His Highness the President of Sheikh Khalifa, President of the country, and following his directives to follow the, to establish good relationships uh, with the countries in the area, the, the participants thanked His His Highness Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, the Deputy Chief of Armed Forces, for his interest in the Gulf area and the security of the Gulf area. Of the Gulf security, the participants also thanked His Excellency Jamal Sanad Sawidi, General Director of the Emirates uh, Center for Research and for his, for, his ad, for, for his views on the challenges facing the area here. After discussing these uh, views and ideas, the meetings ended with these recommendations, the necessity to work in the Gulf area to reach co accommodations, uh, compromises here that based on the international relationships, and as one of them is the non-interference and respect of the other countries, and, and join efforts to to face the possibility of a military and uh, co confrontation in the area. Three, uh, the necessity of, how, of building the, the decisions on, when, on water and food security, uh, on reliable information and the use of technology to develop the use of food. Uh, the importance of establishing a system to use the water, water systems and water resources and managing them effectively. Five, uh, focusing on the um, Turkish motives to interfere in the Middle East and preparing for their new caliph, new Turkish attitudes and the, also the Muslim brothers. Six, concentrating efforts to use the revenues of oil and petrol uh, to support economies, internal economies. Seven, 
the importance of the important the importance that the 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 countries, the Gulf countries, they use their wealth in defense of their nations. We have a comprehensive view of to provide uh, security and safe passage of, of, in the Gulf. Nine, the diversification of alliances with, in the, for the Gulf countries and developing their capabilities and developing their uh, Islamic, Arab and Islamic alliances to face uh, the different, different situations in the area. Ten, uh, put more pressure on Qatar allies and facing the Qataris government and uh, with the brother, uh, Muslim brothers. Now we open the discussion. Now we have a question here about, uh, which is about the Gulf security uh, covers here. And we, the question is about the relation between the security of the Eden and the Babel Mandip Strait. Uh, relevant has a, a, a relationship, a, any relation to the situation here. Now, in the south of Yemen, we fight for security, but and lack of decisiveness there. Well, what will it lead to when we talk about lack of decisiveness here? We will. Any questions about the? Recommendations. Then, uh, today, that's enough for today. At the end of the of today's symposium, in the name of, uh, on behalf of the general director of the Emory Center for Strategic Studies and Research, we thank you all, everybody, and we thank you for participation in this conference. Peace be upon you.